This is the Magic Leap 1 and I'm going to try it out now for the very, very first time. Of course, I'm truly excited and I'm going to let you know all of my first hands-on impressions about the Magic Leap 1 coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang. If you are just as excited about VR and AR as me, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. Before I try this out for the very first time, I would like to thank Hololight, the company that invited me into their headquarters here in Munich to try out the Magic Leap 1 for the very first time. Hololight is one of the leading mixed reality startups here in Europe that does mixed reality apps for the enterprise. So if you are a company and if you're wondering how mixed reality could help your company to progress, then definitely check out Hololight. You will find the link in the description below. I'm very, very excited now to try this out for the very first time. And um, Fidel, one, one um, employee of the company, is going to lead me through the whole thing. So, all right, let's get going. Okay, awesome. Very yeah, excited. So now. I'll help you putting on the Magic Leap One. Okay, so this, this is the very first. You can just like open it. All like right, this. okay. And close it like this. Okay, so the very first, the very very first thing now, it's it feels really comfortable. It's very light. So I don't really, yeah, it feels comfortable. It's not heavy, and it seems to fit good. Oh, and directly, I, I see something there. Now floating here, um, oh, basically also here. So this is some kind of landscape that I see. So this is this is the main menu. Uh, well, this is kind of the splash screen of the whole um, uh, OS shell. So uh, this is kind of an invitational screen for people to use the uh, Magic Leap. Okay. So the the very very first the very first impression that I have in terms of field of view, it does feel actually quite bigger than the field of view of the, the, the Microsoft HoloLens. The, the, very, the very, very first impression that I have now. And yeah, so I see the splash screen is it's some kind of islands which are floating above the table here right now. And um, yeah, there is like a, an astronaut which is floating here in space. And it does look very, very nice. Okay, so tell me what's next. Okay, first you should take a look at your controller. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you have examined it before, but you have uh, a touchpad very prominently in the center. Yeah. It also yeah. works as a button. You can click on it, but uh, currently you don't need that one. You need the trigger, which is at the bottom side. Yes. yes. If you tr pull the trigger, then you will enter the main menu. Oh, yeah, indeed. You know you should see a radial menu. It's correct. Oh, uh, it says. We don't recognize your space. Oh. <laughs> Scanning will help to improve your world map. Should I scan or cancel? Um, please cancel for now. Okay, so I can I can swipe. Yes. And um, yeah, let me cancel this now. All right. New content may not be saved though. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, so now I see um, I see the main menu right now. Um, it is floating above the table, and well, actually, I can I can move towards it or back. And it stays right where where it is at, right? So this is about the tracking. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty pretty cool to see your environment and to see the people here around the table while still being able to see this. So so this is this is definitely cool. Well, similar to Hololens, um, just like really like uh, the FOV is indeed is indeed noticeable better than in Hololens. So what I would like to tell the audience right now is that the, the picture, it's, it really does look 3D. So I can, I can tell that the, the, the menu point that I, that I chose, which is in the middle, is floating closer to me than, than the other um, menu icons around it. So, so this is pretty cool. And also, I can go closer, yes. Nice. So basically now I stood up and the menu also hovered a bit higher, right? So to, to keep it to keep it in the screen, I think, right? Yeah, okay. That is that is cool. So it seems like they, they're using some kind of tricks. So 
to not let you see the FOV. So when I moved up, the whole picture also moved up a bit. All right, so I'm going to try now create. And I can, I can hear some sound here. I'm not sure if you hear that, but um, yeah. Basically, it's very comparable to what I hear with the Oculus Go. Okay, I think now it says to grab, point at object and pull and hold trigger. Yes, so you should see a little, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a canvas that you have to pull down. Okay, yes, in, indeed. So now I can also see the trigger now. Um, I can see some laser pointer coming out of this. Yes. But yeah, it is, it is not directly connected to, to the, to the um, trigger. So there's some delay, but it's still usable. Okay, so now I can choose stickers. I can choose uh, like hats. So let's say I'm, I'm using this uh, Hornet helmet now and I can put it on your, on your head. For example. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> but uh, if you move, it's going to stay there or no, no, no. No, no, it's, it's, it's not it's, attached to me. Ah, okay, that would be funny, you know. Yeah. But what you, what you could try is uh, you could select the categories of characters and have them interact. Ah, okay. So basically now I see brushes, stickers, and on the left I see blocks, gadgets, and characters. So um, I can now click on characters, like a fish, like this knight that we've seen in, in, the, in the trailer, UFO, and sea turtle. So I can place the sea turtle anywhere, yeah. like here now in front of me. And it's now starting to swim around. And it's coming closer to me now. Okay, so um, I just had the, the, yeah, the sea turtle, which was like floating in the space and still like floating around here now. And I can still move it and interact with it. And yeah, I can go closer. And uh, it's, it's truly good, I must say. I'm, I'm quite astonished how 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 good it looks actually i didn't i didn't think it looks so good so let me put a knight here on the table now okay so i have now a knight which is like walking around the table i mean um, you guys have seen that probably in the in in the in the trailer and i can sit down now and uh, yeah the little knight is coming closer to me and it is it is honestly quite astonishing how good that looks. So, um, well, I can still tell that it's like a holographic, right? So it's not like perfectly like um, blocking the light of things that are behind it. No, but it's, it's still, it is still pretty, pretty awesome. What do you think? I mean, what is your opinion about it? Well... I personally was actually surprised um, by the quality of it as well. Yeah. So after negative reviews in the beginning, I didn't expect this to be as good as it is. Yeah. So in general, yeah, image quality, of course, it's, it's very, very good. Okay. Also, the tracking is quite good. Yeah, the track, it looks actually quite good. So I have things hovering around now. And um, yeah, the UFO just kidnapped the, the knight. <laughs> which is a cool thing that you have these kind of interactive things and yeah the UFO is now hovering around me and the thing is even though you have this um, limited FOV anyways you follow the UFO so I don't, I don't think that I don't think that the 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 FOV is actually so bad anyways your FOV is kind of restricted by um, by, by, by the glasses in the first place so I would say in your, in your, real, in your real life, because, because of the glasses, probably you now have an FOV of probably, I would say 90 degrees perhaps. And so 90 degrees of the real world that you see around you. And then you have, you have the FOV of, the, of what the Magic Leap can show you. So it doesn't feel like so restrictive, definitely better than what yeah, then what the, the HoloLens can offer you. So I've now placed like a T-Rex on the table. And the T-Rex is now walking around here. Okay, it was also st sucked up by the UFO. 
And the great thing is, um, if you also had the whole uh, the, the the magically one right now, you would see exactly the same thing. No, no, no. Uh, we we would have to hook up it, uh, yeah. the, uh, the the leads to each other. Um, okay, but then you could see what I see. It depend. Uh, well, um, depend on the app. Depend, yeah, this depends on the app. So whether the app is uh, applicable for multi-user experiences or not. Okay. Now I have I've put some some little trees here on the table and uh, some little bunnies are running around and you know actually I see the stuff here directly in front of my eyes and I would love to even go closer but if I go too close then things will stop to render I actually actually have the same experience so yeah. here I would also like to go closer want to go want to go closer right? I de definitely so um Yeah, it's, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. The three D effect is great. I I hadn't expected it to be so good, honestly speaking, because also I was I was reading the reviews and they said like, okay, you have these um, two planes and they're switching between the two planes, but honestly speaking, like, I don't really see them them switching now. If I go closer, oh yeah, no, I saw it. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay. So um, if you are, if you go closer, if you are first of all quite far away from the object and then you go closer, at one moment, like one millisecond, there's some kind of switching and it will switch between the two, the two planes. But I, I really don't think that this is a big problem. If you don't even know about this, you won't even see it. But yeah, cool. Should I do anything or? What do you see? Um, I see Sigur Ross in the in the background and um, some pink floating thing in front of me. Try to interact with it with your hands. Oh, okay. This app is about interacting with the hands. Okay, I, okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. That is, that is pretty cool. So I can uh, change the, the sound, okay, right, right. Ooh, things are happening here. So I see something at the wall, something psychedelic happening with the wall. It's uh, how I imagine um, it is to take LSD, but without having to take the drugs, <laughs> which is pretty good. Okay, so basically you, you play, you can play with all the, all the things, mm -hmm. and uh, it has different faces. Faces, faces. Okay. Yes, so there's always some 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 objects, new thing. Objects, organisms floating, growing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is something like a white static. Like when you interact with this, yeah. you can go on to the next face. Okay, so I, I must say, like right now with this app, they they make it very very smart. Because the things that are like um, at the at the FOV at, at at the border of the FOV, they are like kind of fading out. So I don't think that anyone who doesn't know about what it, what FOV actually means, I don't think they will they will see any problem. Okay. So I see some kind of fireballs, um, flowing fireballs, which are floating in the air right now. And I can interact with, with my hands. And yeah, and stand up. Yeah, so, so, I, I, so now here the field of view, the vertical field of view is kind of yeah, limiting a bit it would be definitely better if if the field of view, the vertical field of view, would be would be bigger, because here is now here is the 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 border. Okay. But uh, in terms of in terms of clarity, 
I would say this is like, uh, yeah, it, it looks, it looks, it looks very convincing. And um, in terms of res resolution, <laughs> if we would look at it from the VR point of view, like I, I wouldn't say I, I couldn't see the individual pixels, or I, I cannot see something like a screen door effect. But probably that's also because everything is kind of. Uh, mixed with mixed with your natural reality, so it's definitely something totally different than than virtual reality. So I can interact with my hands with things here. And would I say it's fun? I would definitely say so. It is uh, something totally different. Okay. Oh, I can I can take those fireballs around even. Okay, so the next phase right now, I see some some blue balls floating around. It reminds, and then there's some something that would remind me of a coral, perhaps something red floating. So I'm just trying to to find out what happens. If I go, if, if things go out of the field of view, actually what happens, they, they won't be directly cut. So if they are close to the, close to the, to the end of the field of view, they will kind of fade out. So it's not like so harsh. So I have a floating screen right now and I'm going to try out the NBA app. So it tells me now it's loading the content. Hmm. Okay. So. So now this is this is the experience of having like of watching television on a on a quite big TV screen. I would say I don't know. This is like probably probably a ninety inch screen. And if I go closer, yeah. Yeah, if I go closer, then again, the field of view kind of, kind of restricts me from seeing the whole screen. So you have to be at, at a certain distance to the screen, right? Okay. I'm wondering, what, would I want to watch this? Probably I could watch this. Would be okay, yeah, if, if my friends also, <laughs> also use the Magic Leap or in the future something much cooler. I can imagine that we would be watching like a match like that. But then definitely this has to look much better <laughs> and get much better with the FOV. But uh, in terms of resolution, I would say it is totally watchable. I can see I can see all the details on the screen. I can see, um, um, yeah, the time here, how long they've been playing, and uh, everything is really very watchable. Uh, this is pretty cool now. So there are some menus next to the next to the screen where I'm watching the NBA game right now. And uh, yeah, one is like an, an icon with with a magnet, so I can fix I can fix the screen to the walls. Then there is some other icon uh, where I can move it around, like I can move it around all around the wall, this wall right now. So now it's in the middle of that of that whiteboard there. I mean, you won't see it, but on that on that whiteboard now, I see I see somebody um, dunking the ball. In cool, this is definitely cool. The field of view is, if you directly look at it, it's fine. So if you could look again at at the at the whiteboard, so I would say that um, from this distance now I'm probably three meters away. That I would say like um, seventy to eighty percent of the whiteboard is now actually the screen, which is pretty nice, and it looks it's completely fixed to that whiteboard, which I think is pretty awesome. Okay, question mark, what is question mark? Okay, it tells me what to do. I can, I can even scale the screen. I can even make it bigger. Let me try this out. Uh, I think I have to pull it to make it bigger. Yes, that's right. Okay, so now actually it's the whole, it's, now it's the whole whiteboard uh, which is pretty cool, but it does look as if it was floating a bit in front of the whiteboard now. And 
yeah, now also you got the problems with the field of view because if I look a bit to the r to the right or left, then the yeah the, the 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 screen will be cut. So definitely field of view still needs to get much better. But I think for for the Magic Leap One for the first device, this is actually pretty awesome. Welcome to Helio. Add a third dimension to the web. Okay, all right. So I see now like a bird hovering close to me. To pull out 3D content, move your cursor to the bird and press and hold the trigger. Look around to move it. So, so this is probably some kind of website now or in the future. And I, can, I, I see a bird now which is hovering around me and I can press and hold the trigger. Okay, and now I can, I, I, I can move the bird with my gaze and I can put it probably here next to me. And now the bird is floating around here. So I took it from the website and I placed it in, around in my environment, which is pretty, which is pretty neat. So probably in the future, you simply go to the IKEA website with your Magic Leap uh, 2 or with your HoloLens 2 and you see something from the IKEA catalog and you simply place it around your room, which is pretty damn neat. So it points me to the Magic Leap tutorial. So everything that I just did was on a website, on a normal website, which is pretty cool. So yeah, in the future, you can access any kind of content <laughs> and pull things out of, out of websites and place them in your room, which I think is pretty awesome. All right, so I'm just coming out of my very, very first time with the Magic Leap 1. And my very first impression, well, you can probably tell from my smile, is I really liked it. Uh, actually, I'm, quite a, I'm kind of impressed by it. So even though I've, I've heard some quite negative reviews, people are being disappointed. But I must say, uh, I'm not disappointed at all. And it is... It is quite magical once you see things floating around you, once you place um, virtual objects on the table, on your real table, once you can walk around um, of these objects and these objects stay perfectly in, in, in place and you can look at them and they do look convincing to be there. So this, yeah, this mix, this mixed reality is truly impressive. I had, um, I, I thought that the, the, the FOV, the field of view of the device is actually not so limiting. I think for, for the very, very first version of the device, it is, it is really good. So for the very, very first version, no, no question, it has to be become better. It will become better over time. But for the first leap, for the Magic Leap 1, I believe they did a pretty good job and it is noticeable noticeably better than the hololens in terms of in terms of field of view and um, yeah thanks to this device anyways obstructing your field of view quite a bit in the first place i don't think you you're going to have lots of problems with with the fov so um i told you when i was using it now for the very first time the fov it felt probably like 80 90 ish degrees of your reality that you can see because of um, the obstruction here of of this of of the Magic Leap One itself, and then to have these to have the FOV of the Magic Leap One onto that 80 degrees, it's not a huge problem. So I did I did see it sometimes when looking down, stuff was not there anymore. So definitely it will be cut, but developers can kind of mask it by having things fade out. So that is pretty well done. And I saw this especially in the Tonandi app. They have done a great job whenever things were going out of, um, out of your field of view. Basically, they, yeah, they, they make things fade away. So that is pretty awesome. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, it is, it is very comfortable. I was wearing it now for like one hour. And um, as compared to the VR headsets, I have less problems right now. If I if I use VR headsets for one hour normally, yeah, I may I'm, I might feel like okay now it's time to take this off. But if there was more content, I would definitely have played with it for for a much longer time. So so without a doubt, that 
what, what the comfort is concerned, it is truly awesome. Then in terms of the audio quality, they, they do something just like, like the Magic Leap, like the Oculus Go is doing. It's directly, you can directly see it here. Here are the, you should probably see it now. Here are the speakers. This is pretty nice. Um, as what the comfort is concerned here, this is a very nice me mechanism. It should, it's, it's super easy to get this, to put this onto your head and truly nice. Then um, actually you can also change, you can also change the, the, the nose piece here and you can also change, change this piece here. So, so they, they will directly give you a few pieces to, to match your, to match your head. Um, now for the IPD, um, there are two different models for the Magic Leap one. I, I believe this is the normal one. Uh, well, I have a very standard IPD of 64 millimeters, so I didn't, f I didn't have any kind of problems whatsoever with this device. I didn't, didn't feel strange. Some, sometimes if your IPD mismatches that of the, of the VR headset, you will feel terrible. But, well, I have the standard F FOV, uh, IPD, so I didn't feel any problems. Mm, in terms of tracking, it is really good. The, the, the virtual objects simply stayed wherever they stayed. I tried the, the HoloLens just before and it's, it's very comparable. Actually, um, the, the, the people from, from Hololite, the company which invited me today, they really like the, the HoloLens as well, the, the tracking of the HoloLens. And I, I did feel it's like super stable, the tracking of the Hololite. Things were perfectly um, steady, the virtual objects hovering in your room. But I must say, I was also kind of, um, yeah, uh, um, impressed by how things stay steadily in your environment with the Magic Leap One. So I wouldn't, I think, I think they did a good, they did a good work here with the tracking. And again, I must tell you for the very first device that Magic Leap brings to the market here, I think it's, it's a great device. I think it's a great developers kit. I think developers can use this for and create fantastic things. So the Tunandi app, the, this uh, music app is pretty amazing. If you, if you listen to the, to the songs and if you can interact with these uh, psychedelic <laughs> things that are floating around you and the create app where you can play with uh, little figures, put them in your room and have them interact with your environment and with each other. It is really truly magic if you see this for the very first time so and i just saw it for the very first time and yeah i'm truly truly excited about this and about the future of of um the technology in in general i do believe now now that i've tried it myself i truly truly believe that ar is going to be huge especially once it becomes um yeah not as big as this but even this is not bad, I would say, for a very first device. But I do believe this is going to completely change all of our lives, especially once everything that's in here is going to look like cool shades, normal, normal sunglasses with a wider field of view. It's going to blow all our minds away. And even now, in this Magic Leap 1 edition, I feel... The resolution already looks nice. Looking at the screen, at this virtual screen that I put onto the wall, I could watch a game. I could definitely watch a game. Um, at this point in time, probably I would still prefer my normal flat screen TV, but uh, I can see people use it in the future to have virtual screens everywhere, have their friends all use um, augmented reality instead of really buying a flat screen TV. Absolutely, this is the future. And this is, without a doubt, going to be huge, huge. So once this comes out for consumers, I'll be very excited about it. If they manage to bring this down to a digestible price, can I say like this, of under $1,000, it's going to be huge. And I even, ha I even have not tried the... I even haven't tried the... Um, yeah, like the games. So everything I tried right now were experiences. It was nice, but I truly believe like once there's more interesting games coming out for this, like 
the first person shooter that I couldn't try right now because it wasn't out, out now, this is going to be awesome. Um, what I could tell for, uh, for the user experience, for how to interact with, with um, the menus and such, very well done. The, the main screen is nice, very easy to use with, with the controller. What I found a bit strange in, in the Helio app, this web browser, I was expecting that I could use this here as a pointer, like pointing to things, but no, I could not. Instead, I had to use the, the pad in order to, uh, yeah, to have some little virtual um, eye um, cursor that I had to move around. So it felt really strange. So we have this, this thing which is perfectly tracked in uh, Six Degrees of Freedom. Why not use it to point at things in this Helio? So I do believe they still have to improve the, the user experience. Things are not yet perfectly intuitive. I didn't know how to grab things. So I think they can make it much better. Why don't you have, dear Magic Leap, why don't you have the user's point with this like a laser pointer to the thing that you want to take out? So I would believe it would be much better if you could go there with, with, with this here and grab things instead of having to point, point the little cursor with this as if we are in some old little windows device doesn't make sense so i think for as what the um the ux is concerned they can still improve quite a lot honestly speaking but it's the very first model i think they can still do some tweaking until until they um offer this for the consumer they still have some time to make it better other than that yeah i think i have mentioned most of it right now um <coughs> The light pack that you put into your into your pocket it is not heavy yeah so when i was when i when i placed it into my pocket i didn't feel it at all and i think it's a smart decision not to have it on your head in the beginning right now because um yeah you, you don't feel the weight in your pocket but you would definitely feel it on your head so it does make a difference i think it was a smart move from magic leap to to put it um, into into the light pack. I believe um, these were my first impressions. I can also talk about the cursor for uh, the, the controller for one moment. The controller definitely feels very, very nice in your hand. Uh, six degrees of freedom, it works nice. The trigger button, it doesn't have a click in the very end. Probably would be nicer if it, if it had a click in the end. It is just like this. Uh, there's another bumper that which clicks works nice um we have the cursor right here the touchpad touchpad it it also actually um i thought i could click it and actually i think i could but there's no um you don't have um a clicking motion you don't feel it when you click so i would prefer it if if also there was a noticeable click on the controller which is not so I think this is something that would be better if, uh, if it was actually, if you could feel your click. So, so that's something for the user, user experience, which was not perfect, but probably, I do think they have a, they can do this with uh, the vibration inside the device. So probably the developers could have this vibrate if you click on the touch, on the touchpad as well. Yeah, and yeah, the home button works fine. Here we have a USB-C here to load, to, to recharge it. Definitely, it could be improved as well. Put a click here, put a click there, and then Magic Leap, you will be fine. Yeah, so I think that's it for my very first impressions with the Magic Leap 1. And as you could tell, I am indeed impressed about the technology. I believe this is the future without a doubt. It could be awesome if this went down in price for the consumers, let's say under $1,000. And I do believe that Magic Leap has a winner on their hands. In general, the technology is impressive. This is the future. I can see myself using something like this. And uh, once this goes down in size, once this becomes like just like, uh, yeah, like sunglasses in the form factor, this is going to change our lives. Without a doubt, this is the first step. Don't forget it. And um, yeah, definitely augmented reality this is the future so i would like to thank again 
Hololite, the mixed reality startup company that invited me to check this out. Again, they are one of the first companies, if not the first company that has it in Europe right now. And they are working on exciting, exciting apps for the industry, for enterprise. So if, if you want to explore this technology now already for your company, then definitely check out what Hololite has to offer. I'm going to leave a link to Hololite in the description down below so that you can check out what they can do for you. Again, thanks a lot to Hololite for allowing me to check out the Magic Leap 1. Now, if you like this video, then of course I'd be very happy about a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MOTV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.